came up about the relationship between uh, between uh, on the one hand uh, the weight updates on the other hand uh, the normalization on the other hand uh, the other foot um, uh, the, uh, the the resampling process I just want to um, re-examine that um, again to remind people so you may remember this uh, slide from this morning right we have particles at any one time a certain time if we freeze time um, if this is occurring at an observation a particle has a certain vector of, of belief about the world for the joint measles chicken pox model this vector would include measles stocks and chicken pox stocks in addition to stocks about any time, uh, time varying parameters here that are undergoing random walks or transforms of which way. And each particle has its own hypothesis about the world. It believes this about the world right now, or it believes that. And uh, those, those values in that vector have come from evolution till this point, which is stochastic in nature. But at this time, they have a particular value for a specific particle. And, um, and then uh, data comes in, and uh, we're going to compare what the model expects, well, excuse me, what a particular particle express, which is basically going to be a function of its, of its state vector for that particle, and any general, you know, general uh, equations for the model and, and particle assumptions for, uh, for the model as a whole. It, it has certain expectations on a per particle basis. That's why it's located under each particle. And based on those expectations and the observed data, we're going to calculate likelihoods, right? For each likelihood we consider, maybe it's for clinical cases, we calculate what's well, the likelihood of a particle that expects this many cases observing that many clinical cases and so on. So for each particle, we could calculate likelihood values for it, however many likelihoods we have. And in our case, we just multiplied likelihoods, right? To get a, a likelihood value for observing both data, both datums for this day t um, for a given particle. So each particle has a sort of overall likelihood of observing that, that observation at day t. Um, and this likelihood to update the crux of the update here in the condensation algorithm is we're going to multiply this likelihood by the existing weight of the particle to arrive at a new weight. But this is an unnormalized weight now. So we're going to do that for each and every particle. But these weights are unnormalized in the sense that they may total up to more than one or less than one. And so before we confirm that as the weight, or before uh, we don't confirm that unnormalized weight directly as the weight. We instead normalize that so they all sum to one. Okay, and there's many particles beyond these. So I, these ones right here won't sum to one. But the point is, across all particles, they have to sum to one. So you just take these values, the updated unnormalized value, and you divide by their sum. For, for and, and you know, um, you sum the up, and for each particle, it's just the unnormalized divided by that sum. And so this value for the updated weights will be directly proportional to the un unnormalized um, analog to it, just with considering the sum of the unnormalized weights. And then that gives us the updated weights. And remember, this whole process does not change the particle's beliefs one way. If you had a particle, it does not change the belief of any one particle. If you had a particle that believes something is the case right now at the start of this update, it's going to believe the same thing later. The only difference is it's going to be its weight is different. And that makes all the world of difference because particles that have higher weights are particles that are more represented in the distribution. So we'll simply upweight certain particles that have been more consistent with the data. Those are more represented. There are more of them around conceptually. And, and there are fewer um, and, and there are fewer of the particles that are very low weight. So like this particle with a weight of 10 to the minus 7, you know, there, there's virtually none of them in the, in the importance uh, weighted distribution that this represents. So um, the weight is everything when thinking about the particles. Uh, the weight is how we 
sample from the particles, we don't consider particles without their weight. And if we want to compute a mean across particles, we draw the particles, for example, with a probability of drawing each according to its weight, and we take the mean across that. It doesn't make sense to, to compute statistics across the particles themselves ignoring their weights. Because the distribution is represented by the particles considering their weights as important to it. A bigger weight, a big weight, if one particle is a weight twice as big as particle A is a weight twice as big as particle B, there's twice as many of the particle B beliefs in the distribution as particle A's. Okay? Now, where does resampling come in? Resampling could occur once you have these updated weights. That's when resampling can kick in if there's lots and lots of particles, if the, if, if the effective sample size is small compared to the total number of particles. So if there's lots of particles which have very low weights, then we will resample. And that will basically flush out those particles with low weights and allow us to use the 10,000 particles to good effect by capturing those that have serious weights, that have, that have higher weights. And we do that because we care about particle diversity we don't want to be spending our time with these dragging around these particles that are not really contributing to the distribution. <laughs> we want to have particles that are contributing to the distribution by virtue of having larger weights. And, and once we do the resampling, we'll have particles uh, that are across all those 10,000 that are meaningful, that, that are reasonably, you know, plausibly likely to be selected. That's why they survived. There's a survival of the fittest, so we have the fittest surviving. And then we're going to simulate the model further. Further stochastics is time t goes to time t plus 1, time t plus 2, time t plus 3, successive observations. Those particles, which were copies of each other, will evolve stochastically. And we'll be able to have those 10,000 particles having a rich diversity right, over time because of the subsequent <coughs> ensuing stochastics. Does that make sense? So this shows that process, uh, Lavi, I hope this is helpful, where you have model state coming into the update, you have the weights updating based on the likelihoods, you have a normalization of those weights, and then you have resampling, which can occur. Does that make sense, Simon? So, um, so the precision of your likelihood would directly impact the, the chance that you will uh, resample? So, if, for example, if you have a very tight likelihood, you're going to resample more often Correct. than if you had a very Correct. loose. Um, probably, probably that's the case because um, it's the regulatory character of the process. So, I, I, I think that's probably the case. But there's some interesting questions in my mind because it, there's kind of a regulatory component of it. Where, um, but if you have naively approached, if you have a very tight distribution associated with the likelihood, you'll dismiss a lot of particles that are further off as kind of being shaft. They're kind of dead weight. They're, they have very low, such low probabilities, um, of uh, such low weights because they have very, very low likelihoods that every time you update, you may dismiss a lot of particles. And, and because of that, you may end up following this weight update step, including the normalization, you may come you might say, oh, our effective sample size is too small, right? Because a lot of these particles are very low weights. So now we have to resample again. I think that's probably true. But when I say it as a regulatory character, okay, so you resample, and then you have a lot of very fit particles, a lot of very capable particles, and those particles will now be quite a bit tighter. Mm -hmm. And so the next distribution you the next time you judge them, they'll be clustered more tightly um, as a result, and maybe not as many quite will be dismissed. And, but I think, by and large, I think it's fair to say that if you make it tighter, you're going to be doing resampling more frequently. So you can have like a going loss precision where you're yeah, you're right. neither yeah. not you 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 yeah. over over yeah. Over, sam over resampling and under resampling. I suppose that's true. Uh, and, that's how, and that's how when, when you come to understand setting the precision parameter, that's one of the things that you might look for. Yeah. I, I, I think that that might well be true. That strikes me as ringing plausible. And um, uh, we haven't put this in place yet, but it strikes me as a point of opportunity. Yeah. 
Um, what we're going to get to next, MCMC and then PMCMC, there's going to be Goldilocks stuff that was in. There's, there's lots of Goldilocks needs. You know, that bed is too hard, this one's too soft, but this one is just right. I, uh, okay, other question. The Levy. Yeah, what, what's up? Um, so because of the, the normalized process that we have in the way, um, it does not, sorry, because initially I was thinking also, does mean as we get um, towards the end of our simulations, the number of times we have to do the sampling will be less and less. No. Nope. But that is not the nope. case because we have oh. the weight normalization. So well, yeah, because after resampling, every particle is given the same weight. So that they're no longer carrying around their earlier weights okay. because they've been selected. They're all given a weight um, that's equal, mm -hmm. and it sums to one. So it's one over the weight turns into one over the number of particles mm -hmm. for every particle. Does that make sense? Okay. It's it's really good you're getting this understanding because it will help in understanding particle MCMC. Okay. Um, this, this group is asking very good questions, and I'm impressed by how much you want to learn about the particulars of this. Um, I will, so did that answer your question, though? Okay, I will just note, for those who are interested in going deeper, I'm going to be going on to, uh, to particle, to MCMC and PMCMC, but I would note that if you really want to understand at a mathematical level what's going on in terms of probability <coughs> distributions, I may come back to a bit of this tomorrow, as time allows, but I will note that I have detailed notes here, including color coding that will help you track things, that helps understand, track through, step by step, what is going on here at a mathematical level at two levels. Number one, the level of the distributions involved. This lays out exactly what's going on and why it works out so beautifully when you choose, for example, the condensation algorithm, and why we can simply update the old weights by multiplying by the likelihoods, okay? It, it links this out, and you'll notice I label things with colors and stars, which indicate the same thing in different, in different slides. So here's this, here's this one, you know, it's our friend, um, here, it, it will follow it through this and this and this. We recognize our friend again and again. Here's the stars. If you're interested in this, um, you can follow, follow this through. Here's our likelihood function. Um, and it turns out it's gorgeous. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I wish I had full time to, to talk with you about it. Um, but uh, we have other things that are absolutely essential to communicate about MCMC and PMCMC. So I'm not going to go through this right now. What I will note is that it gives a really clear understanding as to why you can just, um, uh, you, you can just distributionally take, it's rec why it's recursive. You just consider here the likelihood function um, and that relates it to this in the in the previous time step. Anyway, um, this this is sort of uh, the weight update. So this is understanding it at one level. To understand it at the next level, this is all about distributions, and I go into sampling trajectories too. But the next level is the how it's captured in terms of important sampling, and why we use these weights, these kind of weird weights. Why can't we just sample directly from the distribution? Well, it turns out it's not possible to do that. So we use this important sampling. We use samples that are weighted representative of their, of their, um, uh, their proportion within the, uh, the distribution. And I introduced the notion of important sampling. And the idea is suppose we want to sample from a distribution. We don't have maybe a a really nice way of, of, of drawing from it. Um, but we have a distribution we can't sample from quite easily, like a uniform distribution. If we want to sample from this blue distribution, the so-called target, but all we can sample from, in fact, is the red distribution, there's a beautiful way to do it. If we want to sample from the blue, we, all we can sample from is the red. You can sample from the blue in a beautiful way. Number one, if it's a two-step way, number one, you sample from the red. It's 
say sample, suppose I want 10,000 samples from the blue distribution. That is, I want to, you know, I want to sample it more in these peak areas and less here, right? Um, how do I do that? I, I don't know how to sample from it. And it turns out you can't just compute the CDF for those who are more knowledgeable and do it in money dimensions. It breaks down as a technique. And in the case of, uh, of, of um, particle filtering, we don't even know what this looks like. Um, all we can do is say what its value is at a certain point and so on. Um, so, so, so here, if we want a sample from a 10,000 from the blue, and all we can do at a practical level is sample from the red directly, then we'll sample 10,000 from the red, but that isn't our samples yet from the blue. We sample 10,000 from the, from the red, and then each of those samples we label with a weight. And what, it, what gives that weight? The weight is the value of the blue with that, so we sample a value, x, right? Two, or, or it's a vector, you know, of, of 10 things, right? And the, the red has a certain probability for that vector. That's why we sample that. It has some probability for it. Maybe it's a uniform probability. And the target distribution, the thing we'd like to sample from, we can evaluate that, what its probability is. And but we, we want to sample from that target. And we can't directly, we don't know how to draw values from it. Well, all we have to do, that was step one, was drawing those 10,000 from the red. And then, then we label each of those samples we drew with the ratio of p of x to q of x as its weight. And you say, what? Come again? So every sample that we drew, each of those 10,000 or 100,000, whatever you want to make, say 100,000, each of those that you drew from q of x, you label with a weight, OK? And that, the value of that weight is p of x divided by q of x. So if p of x at this point that we sampled, um, uh, if, if uh, p of x is really big compared to q of x, the weight will be large, right? Um, and we'll care about that particle more because it's a special particle. It tells us a lot about you know, um, this, this blue. We want more of it, right? If, by contrast, the weight at x is really small, let's make, imagine that it's over here where the red is far bigger than the blue, um, then p of x divided by q of x will be small. Maybe it'll be 0.5 around here, right? In which case, well, that weight will be 0.5, and we'll care about that sample less, OK? Um, so we associate each of those 10,000 or 100,000, whatever it is, um, uh, for, uh, with, that, with that weight, OK? Um, and um, man, that's something that's, that's bothering me, Karen, um, because this stuff at the bottom, don't look at it. <laughs> don't don't look don't look at that. Okay, that's that's um, um, that that's not needed for for this diagram. Anyway, um, uh, the point is that each has a weight, and then we draw in a second step. Um, we draw from from the weighted samples with a proportion with a chance of drawing. So we have all these 10,000, say 100,000 samples, each of them weighted. And we don't draw them with equal likelihood. We draw them with a likelihood proportional to their weight. So those that are twice the weight were twice as likely to draw. And it turns out that's super easy to do. It's like you, you know, if I wanted to draw, I don't know, if I wanted to, you know, pick one of these three things according to their height, right? Um, I could ask my students to do this, but I pick from my students according to their height. You know, I just lay them down, right, um, on end. And maybe we need something really long. Maybe these chopsticks will do. Um, you know, and uh, what else do I have? How about a nice, uh, I don't know, banana? Um, um, give me something long. Um, yeah, that's pretty low here. Let's, let's, ah, this is nice and long. Okay. Um, there we go. Suppose I wanted to draw from these things with so the probability according to their weight. Maybe their weight is equal to their height. Okay? Imagine that the weight is given by the, by the length of these things. If I want to pick, all I have to do is pick uniformly somewhere in here and see which one it falls in. Okay, it's this guy, right? I want to pick 
I want to pick uh, somewhere even in there, eeny, miny, miny. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, there, there we go. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch a tiger by <laughs> I'll let it go. Up goes Y O U. Um, okay, there we go. So, so I'm picking from them. I'm sampling from them according to their weight, right? Um, and I'm picking from them according to their length, which is characterizing their their weight. So it's really easy to draw things according to their weight. So these two steps that I've described, which are described in this slide, um, those two steps are really easy to perform. First, you draw from q of x. You know how to do that easily by definition. That's why you chose whatever q of x is. You choose it to be easy to sample from. And then you weight them according to the value of p of x divided by q of x for, for each sample you sample from q of x. Every sample, as long as you can, uh, I'm not saying you can sample from p of x uh, directly easily. What I'm saying is if you give me a sample of any value, I can tell what p of x is for that. I can say, what value does that hold? So each sample is labeled by p of x, q of x as its weight. And then I just draw from them according to weights. Eeny, meeny, miny, mom. Right? OK. Um, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is important sampling in a nutshell, OK? Um, and sequential Monte Carlo methods, particle filtering specifically, just relies on those weights. Those are the weights in, in particle filtering. And they allow us to approximate a target distribution, which is implied by the simulation model, but which we can't draw out directly and we can't directly sample from. We want to sample from the target distribution associated with the the simulation model, conditional, and all the data that was observed and the likelihood functions used. And the way in which we sample from that is, is sampling from a prior distribution, which is easy to sample, like you run the model forward, and then by taking importance, uh, the importance weights we've already talked about, which can be shown to be computed recursively by multiplying by this uh, likelihood function. Yes, this yeah. yeah. So even important sampling, um, um, is to choose the normal distribution as the proposal distribution is kind of the most normal thing to do it, or we have some other choice to choose some other distributions. I'm kind of confused. Uh, I'm kind of uh, not clear. What if we choose a uh, normal distribution? So, um, it, I don't think that. That's so, true. so what if you choose a normal distribution? As the proposal distribution. Can you can choose a normal distribution proposal? Well, so you're saying is that good or bad or what? Uh, yeah, I mean if I choose a normal distribu oh. distribution, yeah, since the difference between the uh, uh, target distribution and I mean the weight, mm -hmm. I so maybe the the small value is not to represent p x have a small value. I mean if the weight is small. Not see PX is small. Um, yeah. If the weight is small. Because the normal distribution is in the flat. Yeah, it's not flat. Oh. Right. And so you're saying, could you do this with a red, like a, a, a proposal distribution, Q of, uh, Q of X, yeah. that is normally distributed? Yeah. Can, can, can. Because what's going to happen, remember, you're, you're, the weight is given by p of x over q of x, yes. but the um, the, va the ten thousand values or hundred thousand values I'm drawing from the proposal distribution oh. are drawn are drawn from that probability distribution. So for this one that's shown, I'll get values scattered all throughout this thing here. Yes. For a normal distribution. I'll tend to get a ton of, because I'm drawing from the normal distribution, I'll tend to get a ton of values in the central part, right? Yeah. yeah. And they'll, I'll be like, oh, I'll be, I'll have tons of values surrounding me from the central part and comparatively few from the sides here, right? And comparatively fewer from the sides. Yeah. But if P of, if, if the target distribution 
is big on the sides, for example, right? Um, then we want to we want more in the sides than we're going to have in this big population of samples from the normal distribution. So I want to weight those. I want to upweight those so I sample them more in the second step. But if if my distribution that I want to sample from the target, the blue, if that's what I want to sample from, if if it's shaped you know, with a lot in the center. Like this one might not be bad. Maybe I do a normal distribution as my proposal. And, um, you know, a lot of the ones right in the center will be lower, but, you know, on the sides, both go to, to close to zero and, you know, go way down. And so that might not be a terrible, that might be not be a ter terrible red distribution, uh, 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 proposal distribution for this case, because both cases, they go down near the edges to that. It's just that the weights will be small in the center area, because the normal distribution is so much bigger in the central area than this target. Yeah. And, and that's what we want, right? That's what we want, because we want the weights to be small where we want fewer of them than stage one will give us. Like stage one gives us a lot in the center because we're drawing from a normal distribution. And, but if we want to sample from the blue distribution here, the target, we don't want, so, we don't want that many in the center. We, we want a lot out here. We don't necessarily want them all concentrated here. So we give those less weight. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, 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 I guess so. Uh, um, so, so it's kind of like the weight expresses how much more we need, you know, in the second step. We want a lot more of them than we got in the first step. <laughs> and, and in the center here, so, so here, for this distribution, the red, if we sample, the, remember the first step of, of important sampling is sampling from the, from the proposal distribution, right? From Q of X, the proposal distribution. Yeah. So this distribution, the blue, the red distribution is going to give us a lot more from this region to the far right and this region to the far left than we want, right? Um, yeah. And so those will need to be if we just drew all of the things we drew in, in step one with equal likelihood in step two, we'd get a lot more of these in the side, yep. in the far left and far right, than we want. Yep. Right. So we need those to have small weight, yep. so we don't pick the men, as many of them, right? Yep. Yep. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, right? Yep. Um, and so we give them low weight because P of X divided by Q of X is very small. Yep. But these ones in the center, like these ones in this peak here that, sh that has that little arrow going to it, those we want a lot more of than we're going to have from this, from this uniform distribution. So we want those to be up-weighted, right? Yeah. To have higher weight, because we want more of them, yeah. right? right. Um, and so our choice of weight, this is a key point for particle filtering. Our choice of weights for the particles are going to serve to like if we upweight particles in this region, it's going to like raise it up. It's like it's like orogeny, up you know, mountain formation and geology. It's going to push this up, crustal deformation. It's going to push up the Himalayas like here by upweighting these, right? Yeah. If we upweight these, if we associate these with a with a higher weight in the second phase it's going to, we probably have sampled in the first phase pretty uniformly from here among our 100,000. But if we upweight them in the second phase, we'll tend to sample those more and so it'll form this, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And if this, and same thing for this one, it'll tend to pull it down because this little region where it dips, yeah. uh, the, the target dips below the proposal, it'll have weight less than, less than one and so we'll sample less there. Yeah. So it'll push it down, it's like a subduction zone. Yeah. Um, and um, and if this were, the same principles work if this were a normal distribution. If red were a normal distribution, the weights would be different. Right. Because it's now a ratio of, of P of X 
compared to a Q of X where Q of X is normally distributed. So remember, Q of X is the, is the value of the proposal distribution at that point, right? Yes. And so Q of X for a normal distribution would have a large mass in the center, yep. more than we want. And so we're going to have to associate low, comparatively lower rate weights with that to avoid sampling in the center as much. Because after all, we've been dealt many of the 100,000 will be sampled in the center. We don't want them. We don't want that many. We want fewer of those. We want more in the sides. So the sides will be upweighted. Well, it will be comparatively upweighted compared to that. And the ones in the center will be downweighted such that we arrive at, in the second round, a set of samples that approximate this blue distribution. Okay? Does that make sense? Uh, Simon. So I think, this, and I might be wrong, and you might not necessarily know, but I think, so these weights are essentially a Bayes factor, right? Do you know much about Bayes factors? No, I don't. So they're just, uh, again, a ratio between two. <laughs> oh, then yeah, I mean, it sounds exactly the same. Yeah. I just don't know the term. I think, there was a I think there was a bit of information that you might have deleted there that might be yeah. important. So I think um, one of the reasons why a uniform distribution is chosen is yeah. because you need you need a sufficient range right. under the um, under the, the P of X, yes. or the, yeah. the target distribution. That's right. That's right. I think if you chose a normal distribution, <coughs> you have to choose a normal distribution that's wide enough, wide enough yeah. to, to correct to, to, to sample from the ends. Yeah. Right. Which would then, if you did that, if you kept doing that, it would turn into a uniform distribution. The wider yeah. you made the normal distribution, right. it's essentially this a similar sort of uh, process. Right. So if you have too, too fine of a normal distribution, you'll never, there's a very low chance of you sampling from the ends, mm, where yeah. you need to understand the ratio at the ends to correctly estimate the target distribution. Exactly. And so, so, so to counter that, you usually choose a wider and wider normal distribution so that you do get some of the ends, but then the best way to do that is actually to take a normal distribution. Yeah. Uh, sorry, a uniform distribution. Yeah, yeah. The, the things I deleted, so I created this after my last lecture on particle filtering, but I, I copied and pasted it from the lecture, a similar diagram in the lecture on MCMC I'm about to give, and those things were just inherited from, okay. from, from there. But no, you're absolutely right. You want a requisite yeah. proposal. The proposal distribution cannot be zero, for example, it can have a probability or density, probability density of zero at any point yeah. where you want a non-zero one for the target distribution because then you're not going to be able to sample from that point. And at a practical level, with a certain size, you know, sample size, um, if the ratio is too far off, um, uh, you're, you're, you may fail in sample, you know, you may not be able to sample realistically from where you need to within a reasonable sample as, size. As well as if you think about what parameters you need to cap to, to, to estimate that, um, that normal distribution if you were to, to use one. Right. You would need to understand the variance to, to or, and the mean to, 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 to create the, um, the proposed Correct. distribution where in a uniform distribution yeah. and then, you know, max. It can be, which yeah. is a lot easier right. to try and to get to make sure that you get the Good correct point. range. Good point. Good point. So I'm uh, grateful for that. The big picture here is that this is why the weights are used. It's just another incarnation of important sampling and specifically sequential important sampling. And this is laid out in these in these slides about how this works in in terms of important sampling and why we choose the weights um, in the way we uh, in the way we do and why we update the weights here it is exactly we're just multiplying the old weight by the likelihood here of observing the datum given the particle state so it's all laid out I've tried to do it as it took me a lot of time to arrive at slides which I think communicate it in a reasonably terse way what's going on, um, but, uh, but communicate the, uh, the essence of it in a, uh, in a pretty, solid, uh, pretty solid fashion. So this is all available to you and I'm glad to discuss that tomorrow um, if you'd like to talk about it. But now I want to close the day with some stuff on, P on MCMC, if I could, okay? Because that lays us and the firm groundwork for understanding PMCMC tomorrow morning, which is awesome, and it just follows from MCMC and PMCMC at a practical level fairly straightforwardly. 
So with that, um, with those comments on particle filtering, we are going to go now to um, to PMCMC and uh, well to, uh, via MCMC. Okay. See, quite okay. Um, uh, okay, so um, let's say uh, okay. Save this. 